Why, hello there, honored customers. Welcome to... Th oh, it, it, it's you, Miss Yenfei. Is, is, is something the matter? Surely not more spurious claims that, that my jade betting is rigged and, and no one can ever win? Oh, I swear on all that is sacred. No, nothing of the sort. Has a Snezh 9 merchant named Crossel enlisted your ore processing services recently by any chance? A Snezh 9 merchant named Crossel, you say? Hmm, I do remember that. He brought me a piece of ore, claiming that it was Smaragdus Jadeite. That was the first time I'd ever encountered it, so I had no way of telling if it was really Smaragdus Jadeite or not. But if a customer insists, far be it from me to contradict them. He was quite generous with his money, too, so I didn't give it too much thought. I processed the ore as per his request. Hmm. Do you have any leftover debris from your work on it? Uh, why, yes. It was my first time encountering this ore, after all, so I kept a few loose shavings to study myself later. They're right over there, in fact. Thank you, sir. We'll take a look at them. Try your luck betting on Jade? Huh? If my eyes don't deceive me, the cross sections and patterning suggest that these are Smaragdus nephrite shavings. Yes, it's not particularly rare, nor is it especially valuable. It's used to make jewelry all the time. I've heard it said that Smaragdus Nephrite is in fact the outer layer of Smaragdus Jadeite, though no one's ever proven it. A thin layer of separation, huh? If you must see for yourself, try examining these shavings for traces of elemental energy. Smaragdus Nephrite is an entirely ordinary ore, containing no elemental energy whatsoever. Is that so? Well, we might as well give Elemental Scythe a shot. So, did you find anything? So they really are different. But wait, how come Jichou was able to tell what it was just by looking at the shards? That's pretty awesome. There's nothing special to it. It just so happens that I've come across a great many of these in my time. These two stones actually look very similar. Someone without a deep understanding of them would find it very difficult to tell them apart. There may be only a subtle difference for the casual viewer, but that translates to an astronomical difference in terms of the market price. And, I'm sure, a significant difference in the cost of having them carved into shape. Alright, let's focus up. We're going off on a tangent. But, never mind, Shirto. Why would Mr. Crossel... <sighs> unusual actions have unusual reasons behind them. Let's take some of these shavings back to Chateau. Try your luck betting on Jade? Miss Yenfei? Might I be so bold as to inquire? Um. If you could just confirm for me once more, sir, Mr. Crossel did indeed claim that the ore he brought to your store was, in fact, Smaragdus Jadeite, did he not? Uh, yes, that's right. I still have a record of the job with me, in fact. Um, here. It says quite clearly, uh, one chunk Smaragdus Jadeite, uncut. Then I have no further questions. But could I borrow the processing record and the stone shavings? Of course. But might I ask why you need them? Oh, I have my reasons. Ah, yes. Please sign here on this affidavit. This document shall serve as signed proof that these stone shavings originated from the, uh, ore that Mr. Crossel brought to your store. Please read it carefully. Hmm, yes, I see, I see. <laughs> Forgive me for asking again, Miss Yenfei, but might I know the nature of the incident on this occasion? I wouldn't say there's been an incident, just a minor issue. Thank you, sir. I'll take these with me. With this hard evidence to back us up, Crosso won't dare try to deny what he did! On the contrary, this is far from sufficient to build a case. We need to find something a little more... compelling. 
If you want to make jewelry, you need a professional jewelsmith. Let me think. Jewelry. Jewelry. Hmm. Nope. Aha! Got it! Singsy. She often helps people to find a jewelsmith. Let's go pay her a visit. Well, that was quick. How come you know so many people? Because lots of people come to me for legal advice every day. As you know, Liyue Harbor is the city of contracts. And contracts, well, I should say laws, are very important to us. But the amendments made by the Tianxuan to our laws are unnecessarily complicated. How can I put this? It just seems like they're hard to understand and impossible to finish. As such, legal advisors like myself provide quite the popular service indeed. So you help them make sense of the law. But didn't you say that it's hard to understand and impossible to finish? Yes, well, that's no obstacle because I've memorized all the legal codices. You memorized them? <laughs> you sound surprised. Knowing the law inside out is a legal advisor's bread and butter, you know? Oh, this has nothing to do with being an adeptus. I just like reading things. Again, with that casual tone. Well, that's that then. Let's go look for Singsi. It's you. Has something happened? Did the client from last time... Uh... Have no further trouble from then on? Yes, of course. I'm just here to ask you a few questions. Has a merchant by the name of Crossel asked you to put him in contact with a jewelsmith recently? Crossel? Yes, I remember him. He's a merchant from Snezhnaya, no? Yes, he came to me with a chunk of something he called Smaragdus Jadeite. The design of the hairpins that he gave me was quite intricate, so it took me some work to find someone who was up to the job. Eventually, I found an older jewelsmith who made them exactly according to his specifications. This order was on hold for a very long time, and only completed quite recently, which is why I remember it so well. Doesn't seem like there's any evidence to be found here. Miss Sinksy, I'd like for you to confirm for me once more. When Mr. Crossell commissioned you to find him a jewelsmith, did he or did he not assert that the material he presented to you that day was called Smaragdus Jadeite? Yes, I'm sure of it. The hairpins were made using many expensive materials, and the asking price was quite high, so we had to put this transaction on record with the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Mr. Crossell wasn't very familiar with the necessary procedures, so I filed it on his behalf. I also kept a copy for my own records. See for yourself, the item is called Smaragdus Jadeite Twin Phoenix Pins. The inlaid gemstone is recorded as Smaragdus Jadeite. The document even has the official seal of the Ministry on it. Thank you, Singsi. Now, could you let me borrow this document? Sure. It isn't serving much purpose here anyway. I take it then that there's been some more trouble? Nothing you need to worry about. Just a minor issue. I'll return your document as soon as I'm done with it. Thanks again! Why is everyone's first reaction always to assume someone or something is in trouble? Hmm, I believe we have almost all the evidence we need. We just need to make one last trip. Let's go to Boo Boo Pharmacy to speak with Dr. Baiju. The weirdo with the snake around his neck? What do you want to speak to him for? Because only he can provide an authoritative statement confirming that Smaragdus Jadeite is harmful to the human body. Once we have this final piece of evidence in our hands, we can wrap this case up. My, my, to what do I owe the pleasure? 
Though I'm afraid that if you're looking for our little Chi-Chi, she's out gathering herbs. And if it isn't Miss Yenfei as well, now that's an even rarer honor. What business brings you here, might I inquire? Some charlatans peddling ineffectual medicines again, no doubt? No, no. I'm here this time to ask if you're familiar with Smaragdus Jadeite. Smaragdus Jadeite? Why, yes, there is some information about it included in the sixth commentary on the Seven Mountain Treatises. The Seven Mountain Treatises states that this substance springs forth from stone marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. It is abundant in elemental energy, so if someone without a vision is in contact with it for a prolonged period, best case scenario, they fall ill. Worst case scenario, they'll suffer great changes in personality and their illness will only ever get worse. Huh. Anyway, I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to chit-chat. Knowing you, Yenfei, and given the specific nature of your question... I suppose that you're about to ask me to write an official affidavit attesting to the pharmaceutical peculiarities of Smaragdus Jadeite? That is indeed the case. If you would be so kind, Dr. Baiju. No trouble at all. It's just a single document won't take me a moment. I would mention, though, that you are not the only one who's developed a curiosity for Smaragdus Jadeite recently. A Snezhnayan merchant came to ask me about it not long ago. But after I gave him my reply, his expression shifted to one of remarkable disappointment. I wonder, Miss Yenfei, if your pressing business might be related to this Snezhnayan merchant? Ah, uh, you needn't concern yourself about that, Dr. Baiju. Thank you for penning us that document. I'll make sure to compensate you in due course. You're too kind. Take care now. That Baiju guy is as weird as ever. Is it just Paimon, or does it feel like he was fishing for something back there? Dr. Baiju's always been like that. Well, we have the evidence we need. Let's go find Mr. Crossel. Shangling. Uh, uh, Madam Ping is Shangling's master? I did not expect that. Master, how are you keeping these days? Are you well? Oh, very well, thank you. What a surprise it is that you all had the time to come and visit me today. Hello. Master, we came here because we have a question for you. Do you know about the stove god? Of course I know the Stove God. Does this mean you know them personally? Ah, I see. It's the Moon Chase Festival, isn't it? How interesting. <laughs> so you came to hear some stories about the Stove God. That's right. We're investigating something that happened recently. I see. The Great Stone Surfaces. <laughs> And so, you open an investigation. <laughs> I must commend your guesswork this far. I did indeed know the stove god of whom you speak, but it was a great many years ago. <laughs> Moonchase was originally a rite observed by the Adepti, not something in which the ordinary people of Liyue would ever partake. But over the years, they have sought to emulate it for themselves many times. 
giving rise to various festivals bearing the Moonchase name. On nights when the moon shone bright, everybody would get together for joyful reunions. There would be fine food, fine wines, and choice teas. Later, Rex Lapis unified all of these various festivals under the Moonchase name to honor an old friend of his. In short, the heavens were our witness as we vowed to the moon to come together in joyful solidarity, to remember the past and reflect upon the present. That is the meaning of the Moon Chase Festival. Rex Lapis. <sighs> <laughs> that friend made many contributions to Liyue, and Rex Lapis would not have them go unrecognized. Turning this season into a commemoration of his old friend was also a way to honor that friendship. I can only presume that the Stove God Festival was one of the many subsumed into the Moon Chase Festival. In the hands of Rex Lapis, our nation's traditions were faithfully upheld. It is to their detriment that we must now be the ones to inherit this duty. Ah, oh, Kuching, I simply won't allow you to be so down on yourself. Nothing would delight Rex Lapis more than to know that those who follow in his footsteps continue to value these traditions and are working tirelessly to do them justice. Thank you. Lady Kuching! Huh? Lady Kuching, Lady Ningguang wishes to speak with you. Ningguang's looking for me? Must be important. Please excuse me, everyone. If I'm not back soon, you'll find me at Ningguang's office. There she goes! Hmm. Kaching's a lot more serious when she's got her work face on. Do you want to know who Rex Lapis's friend was? Oh! Oh! Paimon does! Yes, precisely. There are few genuine coincidences in the world. The story of the Lost Festival and the Old Friend are indeed one and the same. The Stove God was a good friend of mine, too. <sighs> what a pity it is that the God is now gone both from the world and from people's memories. How could that happen? It is to everyone's regret that the Stove God passed. But gods cannot be fully destroyed and... We made a pact to wait until the land became fruitful once more. For perhaps the Stove God would then return, albeit in a new form. Really? Master, you must miss the Stove God a lot, right? From the way you talk about it all, it sounds like you were the best of friends. Yes. Thinking back on it all, there are many fond memories. I'm pleasantly surprised to find that Kuching is investigating this. She is a tenacious child, and anything she sets her mind to, she will diligently pursue. It warms my heart and makes me want to give her a helping hand. Unfortunately, however, I cannot simply give her the answer, for the process is of great importance to her. Kuching's grandfather once researched the Stove God, and now she follows in his footsteps. Since Kuching has inherited this conundrum, so too she must inherit the journey to its resolution. You knew Kuching's grandpa? Of course. I count all the people of Liyue among my good friends. I remember when he was the same age as Kuching is now. <laughs> ah, so young. Grandparent and grandchild are definitely made from the same mold, both diligent enough to take on anything and bold enough to see it through to the end. I like to think of Lear as my own little potted plant. I've watched it grow and blossom, and it grows more beautiful all the time. In the blink of an eye, the buds of yesterday are in full bloom today. <laughs> it's wonderful to see. For new blossoms must bloom on the branches if the tree is to remain ever green and ever young. My dears, you are absolutely right to focus your investigation on the stone. It is, as you suppose, the lost statue of the Stove God. 
and within it lie all the answers that you seek. I should like to see the stone for myself if you would lead me to it. Perhaps the truth will emerge even as we watch on. You're all here. I was just about to send someone to fetch you. Kuching, has the stone undergone any changes? A crack has appeared in one corner, but we still can't tell what's inside. What happened? Did someone chip it while no one else was looking? More likely a natural occurrence. Our weapons have had no effect on it. How would a natural occurrence crack it open? This is because the Stove God draws power from the actions of the masses. The heat of a busy kitchen. The joy of a reunion. <laughs> Keep up the good work, and the truth will rise to the surface soon enough. All the books say the Stove God is the deity of food. So is the stone opening up because everyone's cooking for the festival? Hmm. Statues draw power from their people. So, if the Stove God has dominion over cooking, could it be that the passion people put into their cooking gives power to the Stove God? Ningguang and I chose Feast of the Bounteous Land as this year's theme, and now every chef signed up for the competition is busy preparing. Paimon's theory is not an unreasonable one. Plus, a lot of families have reunion feasts around this time. With everyone back home, the whole city's bustling with people, and that adds a lot to the festive atmosphere. So if the stone cracked because Leo has started getting festive, that must mean that when the festive fever peaks, it'll bust right open, right? That's gotta be it! Right, Master? <laughs> well, we'll have to see then, won't we? Okay, the fact that cooking is involved gives us a perfect opportunity. The selection space of Masterful Chefs will be held indoors and seen by only a few people, but the finals will be held outside in public. Everyone who wants to will be able to come and watch it. The atmosphere will be incredibly lively, no question. And when the finals end, BOOM! We'll get to see who the Stove God really is, right? It's definitely a possibility. Well, I've already signed up, so I should be able to help. Yes, for a chef as accomplished as yourself, getting to the final should be a breeze. All this talk of cooking competitions is making Paimon hungry. Oh, Paimon can't wait! It'd be great if Paimon could take a nap and then wake up when it's the finals. Come on, enough for Thank you. 
satisfaction. Yeah.